Welcome everyone. I am Ugur Ozdemir, IT Service Manager in one of the biggest insurance companies in the Netherlands. In the coming slides, we're going to look uh, to the future of insurance. And we're going to do that from the perspective of disruptive innovations. And disruptive means that something new, something small, is able to suppress in a short time, something that exists for centuries or decades, something that is big and penduries. While this big one, spendrous one, that exists for centuries and decades, is only looking and let it happen and is not able to do anything against this. And we are going to look from the perspective of three innovations. In this case, we're going to look from the perspective of Internet of Things from blockchain and big data. A correlation of these three, a together joint usage of these three, what kind of a future are they able to create for the insurance companies? In the coming slides, we're going to look why insurance companies has to pay attention to these innovations. And we're going to explain what blockchain is. IoT and big data is. We're going to take a look to the process, how the research of these three innovations was done, and conclusion and advice for the insurance world. Why? Why does this insurance world need to pay attention to these innovations? Because the world around us changes rapidly and very fast. And before you know, you could be redundant, unnecessary, or unavailable. And let's look what has changed in the past decades, five or ten years. And that's that example of Airbnb and Uber. Airbnb has made the hotel industry very hot and nearly disturbing them. And Uber the same for the taxi world. At the same time, the banking activities. Can you imagine 10 years ago that we could make money transfers or international transfers or opening a bank account that we could do from a simple app on your smartphone? No, you had to be highly educated to do this. Now, a child of a 12 year is able to transfer money even internationally. So the bank job is getting childly low. Let's look at other examples. Looking to TV or broadcasting, everyone can have his own channel, TV channel now. And the younger generations are looking to TV when they want it, and they look to what they want. It. That's all changed. But lively broadcasting with Periscope, YouTube, and Facebook, and similar apps or applications, innovations, we are able to broadcast from our smartphone, from everywhere in the world, to hundreds and thousands of people that can lively follow you. Ten years ago, to do this, you need the big van with a lot of equipment in it and a satellite connection. Now, just everyone, even children, are able to lively broadcast with apps like Periscope and YouTube. The role on offline advertisement has been transported to the online world. So the paper world has changed a lot. And with one click on a button, you can apply to a job. While we have to write, write a lot of letters to do this. So our social attitude has really changed in the past 10 or 5 years. Let's take a look at companies that didn't reinvent themselves in the last 10, 20 years and five years. Kodak, Nokia, and a Dutch company, V&D. They didn't look around what was changed, what has changed, and they didn't look to their identity and their mission and vision. And because they didn't do it and reinvented themselves and created a new identity, a new strategy, and didn't translate this strategy to an appeal, their assortment prices, and a gut position in the online world, they have lost 
this digital uh, revolution. Let's take a look on companies that did it well, like Domino, it's a National Geographic and a Dutch company Wake Up. What they did was look very well to the world around them and they looked to their own self, they looked to their mission and vision, they looked to this to their appeal and assortment and they said we are going to cannibalize our propositions, our products. And they created a new identity and translated that, uh, that identity to a strategy. And from that strategy they created a new appeal, a new assortment, new propositions, and new prices and take their position on a settled world, on the online world. And that way they attracted inspiringly managers and marketing people and they survived and guaranteed their continuity. And what's going to uh, disrupt or change the insurance world? In this case, blockchain in combination with the Internet of Things with the big data will change the insurance world. Because the first generation of internet was especially delivering information. The second uh, evolution of internet was it brought, brought us some value because we could do things on internet. We could uh, make a reservation for our travel. Or we could make money transfer in, in, on internet. We could buy things on the internet. So it brought some value to us, physically value. Now, these are days the next revolution of internet is the internet of systems systems like uh, the banking system the financial system for pension systems like mortgage systems uh, that exist for hundreds and hundreds of years centuries will be disrupted by these three innovations that's the reason why the insurance world has to take these three innovations extremely serious. Let's look to what blockchain is, what IT and big data is. So we have an idea. Before we go further, I would like to tell that, that these three innovations are very wide, deep and complex innovations. It's not easy to explain them on one slide. But my goal is to give you at least an impression of what blockchain is, what blocks are, and what that chain is, and the same for IoT and big data. I believe you will have a lot of ex questions after these slides, but inter on the internet there are a lot of information and videos to find it. But at least let me give you some uh, ideas about what blockchain is. Blockchain is, uh, power is that it is able to eliminate a third party, like a notary, like a bank, like an insurer, like the government, you know. Because it is a system that is reliable, and that's what a third party mostly does. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto, a person or a group of person came with a paper around 10, pa 10, 10 pages and they explained in that paper what blockchain is and how blockchain works what these blocks are and what are in these blocks and how the chain is working one year later the Satoshi Nakamoto, again, the person or a group of person, came with Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency that still runs. Bitcoin now daily transfers for millions and millions of euros and dollars of money and at the same time processes thousands and thousands of transactions daily. At the same time, blockchain is an internet innovation because it runs on the infrastructure and the network of the internet. Blockchain is a decentral database. It is all the transactions that happens on the network of blockchain will be decentralized, saved on all of thousands of thousands of computers on an encrypted and hashed way. 
Because these transactions in the blocks, as we will see in the next steps, are encrypted and hashed and saved each time after validation on thousands of thousands of computers in the network, it is not possible to hack these databases all at the same time. You need a lot of computer capacity, CPU capacity to do that. And that's not possible because these thousands and thousands of computers together has so huge amount of capacity of CPU that you are not able to do and not to hack this one. Another power of blockchain is you can program every value uh, on blockchain. Bitcoin is only one example. People give the example of blockchain like blockchain is electricity and Bitcoin is something like a lamp. But on electricity, we're able to uh, do more, like uh, use a radio or use a TV or use our uh, dishwasher. And our cars, you know, more and more is uh, able on electricity. So that means you can program every value and blockchain, a value like a diamond, like a property, like a house, a car, a vote, election vote. So uh, the possibilities are huge. And blockchain, as mentioned earlier, because it's not hackable, it is encrypted and hashed, it's reliable and it is saved on thousands and thousands of computers and there's no third party that saves it and administrates it it is reliable because of that and it is again always about value blockchain saves only value information and not like big data a lot of huge of data no only value transactions value data is saved in these decentralized databases Let's take a look at how blockchain really works. As I mentioned before, it is always a trans transaction uh, of values. Uh, imagine that someone called Elise wants uh, to, to, to transfer some value to Bob. In this case, it could be money, a vote, a property, a home, a share, you know. Um, when he wants or she wants to do that, he signs this transaction uh, on the node on the computers of the blockchain and all these nodes and computers in the blockchain are try are verifying or at least exist or bob exists at the same time they look all this value exists and or this value belongs to at least if that's okay they give their okay sign in this case more than 50% of these nodes, computers uh, in the network of blockchain must verify that Alice is Alice and Bob is Bob and that value exists and belongs to Alice. But at the same time, on the network of blockchain, a lot of transactions happen with these value transactions. These nodes on, this, uh, on the network of, of blockchain are constantly verifying all these transactions are valid or not. When they are all valid, they were put in, in a block and some kind of a page with a lot of transactions that are being verified. In the blockchain system, they call block. What then happens is, in every 10 minutes, these blocks are closed and every transaction, two transactions, are bring together and, you create, and blockchain creates a hash value of it. Imagine you have thousand transactions in a block, then you will have 500 hash values. After that, it brings them together, these values two by two, you get 250 hashes, till you have one hash over. And when you have one hash over, this hash value will be combined with the latest hash value of the latest block with a lot of interactions in it too. That is the latest block that has been uh, validated to be right one, the good one. So what blockchain does, it combines the hash value of the latest block that was validated, and he brings and combines them together, and he makes some kind of a proof of work 
from these two and he asked to the miners they call it computers in the network of blockchain they are trying to generate to find uh, the value that proof of work needs and when they want find it when someone finds it he gives that signal that he has find its value and the nodes in the network of the uh, blockchain they are going to verify or the value the miner has found is okay if it's okay this block will be placed here and this hash value will be the next hash value which will be combined with the next transaction blocks hash this is a little bit how it works with blockchain uh, as you can see it is a chain of blocks that is being combined with joined together with the hash values and all these transactions are hashed and present in the blocks let's take a look to iot what is iot not only people but also all physical things are connected to internet think to a carton of milk uh, think to your sensors for your doors or lamps or your TV is a physical thing or your key could be your car you know everything everything that you can imagine will be able to communicate with internet so we people can use them and know where they are what they are doing they they can deliver us uh, information think to your smoke alarm as an example your dishwasher is an example of IoT. It is an internet innovation because the traffic, all of these information will go to the internet and available for us. It is a disruptive innovation because it replaces the third party again, the people uh, that are doing the jobs now for delivering information. And in the future, IoT device, devices will deliver this information. IoT is existing about sensors that create data and like a sensor for your door it will deliver the data of the doors open or doors close but your uh, cooker will deliver other kind of information and your refrigerator will tell you an IoT refrigerator will tell you how much carton of milk you have and how much eggs you have and etc that will be a smarter sensor like smart devices and at the same time these devices and sensors will uh, communicate together and when needed they will take autonomous choices for you configured by you uh, before but they will take choices make choices together and take actions like imagine you leave your house while you have something cooking on your cooker your cooker will send you a message that no adult is present at home but the cooker is uh, open and if you're not reacting within five minutes the cooker will shut down so prevent some damages so in this case these equipments will able to communicate together at the same time the cooker will give a sign to the cooker hood and tell him that he is going to shut down about five minutes and the cooker cooker hood will say i will shut down after 10 minutes so they will be able to take decisions for you what iot brings to is that time and location will be they will be bring the time and location independency so you will be from your home or wherever you are with your devices you can start close open etc things around the world and iot brings uh, some new protocols uh, besides the existing ones like a new version of a bluetooth and iot will use these protocols communication protocols like wi-fi zigbee uh, GPS etc and for this smart city LoRa one will be used and at the same time IPv6 will be hardly necessary for IoT a second thing is 
in the nearby years there will come there will be created new sensors that will be very very tiny for uh, one millimeter or smaller and these sensors must have energy to give the signal like the door is open or is closed and tell that every five minutes to do that they need energy so the industry is busy to create very small and thin batteries that can go uh, and exist for a couple of years what is big data for the first time in the history uh, with big data we're c capable to process a huge amount of data quality data for a, a uh, for a useful data uh, after processing in a very short time, uh, sometimes real time. And big data is in the Internet innovation too, especially a lot of data from the Internet will be processed in big data. It is a disruptive innovation because it will bring us new uh, insights of uh, how things are. Because with the, the new information of IoT, and, and processed by big data, we could uh, see new things that we never have seen before and by using smart algorithms. Let me give an example of uh, what uh, of a big data project in the Netherlands. An insurance company has uh, combined his uh, burglary information of the past year data of the past 10 years with the 10 years of data of the of the police and they used made an, an algorithm to process this in a big data and what they are now able to see is they are able to pre predict now in which city in which district of the city in which streets of the city there will be possibly a burglary on some uh, predicted time. So that's an uh, example, as a good example of what big data can bring to us. Let's look further. And big data, it's always about a volume of, huge volume of data and diversity of, uh, of data types, like it's a textual data or a video or it's a sound or it's a picture, you know, all this information must be combined. It's always about speed the, um, and, when possible, real-time information. The quality of information is surely important and the complexity. You have to have more and more parameters of data. In this case of a burglary, you have to bring some information or this, the shops were open or there was an event happening or there was a football match happening and the, the weather information, the age of the people, education of the people that are doing burglary. So all these complex of information must be processed by an algorithm to a result. Now, take a, uh, now let's take a look at the research process what we have been researched. At first, we have been looking uh, to blockchain, IoT, and big data, to the past of these innovations, the present, future, their applications now, characteristics of them, and we made a SWOT analysis of them. From the correct characteristics table of these three, we combine these ones and we create one overview table with all of the characteristics of these three. So you could see on one look which characteristics are being used or belonging to all of these three innovations. And from this overview table, we made some conditions on it. So to generate, uh, to find the right characteristics and which a functional one that you could use to experiment with uh, these innovations. And data was the one in this stage of these innovations to use and to experiment with these uh, innovations. And we look to uh, these innovations, uh, what data meant for it. And we look to the data between these innovations, like what is data between IoT and blockchain. And then we created an overview of existing uh, private and business insurances, because this presentation is 
and looking to these innovations from the perspective of insurances. So we created the list of insurances like a home insurance, like a car insurance, like um, a stock uh, insurance. And then we combine these ones with IoT we, and then with IoT devices. So we said, is a home insurance, is that possible to link with IoT? Yes, so if it's possible to log with IoT, then we said what kind of IoT devices will be used in a home. So in that way, we linked all these uh, private and business insurance to IoT devices when it was possible. And after that, we uh, translated the IoT devices and sensors to a specific data. What kind of a data is coming out of these devices? And at the end, we looked to the data when these uh, devices, smart devices, IoT devices and sensors will be used. What kind of a data will they transfer, transfer from IoT to blockchain and from IoT to big data? That specific data is being described too. And after done these steps and more, we had a picture, we created a picture of how these three innovations will be used in nearby and change and create the future of insurance. Let's take a look to that one. From our uh, research, uh, process that we have passed uh, uh, that we have been talking about in the past uh, slide is that IoT takes a central role because IoT is the only innovation that creates data and that creates value data and that creates a lot of repeating data and IoT is able to replace a uh, damage experts because these IT devices deliver the information that insurers need. So what is the uh, data transfer between IoT and blockchain? Now, IoT will deliver blockchain only value data and he will do that on a low frequency. Imagine you have a smoke alarm, uh, an IoT based smoke alarm system. It will only send blockchain information when there is a fire and then he will trigger and the data he will send to blockchain will be the data that is the time, the date, the location and if he is having extra uh, capabilities he will tell how much people are aware at that moment in that house. But that on that time he will send data to blockchain and not earlier. And blockchain itself is a data receiver. Blockchain is not creating data. And in the use, uh, uh, in combination and use of IoT, blockchain will replace uh, the damage experts because they are uh, saving this trusted information, uh, uh, value information from IoT when that smoke alarm will be activated. In this case, it replaces the trusted third party like a damage expert. So what is the role of big data? What kind of a data is going to uh, big data from IoT? A lot of bulk of data will go to big data and from time to time. That means that um, repeating data like the amount of times that we open our refrigerator or the, the, we use our dishwasher as our cooker and these kind of data that is not really relevant for blockchain will be sent to big data from time to time when it's needed or when it's configured. And big data itself is again a, a, a data receiver like blockchain, but in this case a huge amount of data. Big data will be used in the future of insurance for real-time loss and damage analysis and through that it will replace the third party and the damage experts. In long term data analysis will be done the way of uh, it can analyze 
uh, how often we open our refrigerator and how much energy loss we were creating with that. So it will come with new insights about the way we live and the way we do things. So these producers of these IT devices and refrigerators, as an example, can make a better devices with these informations. Now we have a picture of how these three innovations will be used in the near future for the insurances. And that means especially uh, a joint use of these three will replace especially uh, for a huge amount the claim process. I think for 95% of the claim process will be automated by usages of IoT, blockchain and big data. Let's give an example of, of how it will happen. Imagine you have a smoke a uh, moisture alarm with facial recognition in every space of, of your house. It is an IoT device. So what kind of a data will it send to blockchain? Imagine the smoke alarm is triggered because there is a fire situation. He will send the time, date, and location, and space, and the customer information, how much people are at home at, this, at that time, timestamp will be communicated to blockchain and it is possible when it's configured the smoke alarm is able to phone the uh, fire department and the police too and this iot smoke uh, smoke alarm with the facial recognition possibility will send data if he will see someone is unregistered and is in the house he will send that data what time date information to blockchain because this information could be very important for the insurer and for the insurance companies these are value data and what kind of a data will go to big data? As you see, the arrow is thicker. That means more and more of data will go to uh, big data. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the amount of times that we open our refrigerator will go uh, to the big data, all these informations. Uh, frequently measured of mushroom information will go to big data. The presence and the duration of registered and not registered people and different spaces will go to big data for further an, uh, analysis and processing. So we have a picture of uh, how IoT and blockchain and big data will be used by the insurers and what kind of a data will be sent between these innovations. Let's take a look at our conclusion. As mentioned in the slide before, I, IoT is taking a central role from the perspective of insurance because IoT is the only one innovation that creates data, while blockchain and big data are data receivers. And while blockchain is only receiving in a low, low frequency data and big data with a huge amount of data from time to time. The data between blockchain and big data is not interesting from the point of the view of the insurance companies. What IoT, blockchain and big data brings is the time and location is not important anymore. You can act worldwide uh, thanks to these innovations. These three innovations are uh, deployable now because these three innovations are in use, like blockchain with Bitcoin and other examples. And there are a lot of IoT devices now, and every day there are coming new IoT devices and sensors. So if you want, you can use these three innovations these days. But what we saw was that the big companies are not daring to set the first step uh, to use these three. And another one is that in the near future, there will be a lot of propositions created based on IoT. 
And thanks to the big data, real-time loss analysis will be possible. An issue is that authorization for IoT, and especially for blockchain, is not really worldwide settled. So a lot of companies are using now some kind of uh, Facebook authorization or a Twitter authorization, but there is no big, safe, uh, accepted worldwide secure authorization. So a lot of companies are working to do something to it. These innovations are bringing some na safer nature to us. So a lot of damages will be prevented thanks to these IoT uh, possibilities. But that means that there is going to be a new risk, a risk of sources. What they are, we don't know, but it will uh, create new uh, sources for risks. At the same time, there will be a reduction in the frequency uh, and nature of loss of adjustments. So that's a very important one. And to these new innovations, there will be new categories of consumers on which insurers can create new kind of propositions. And at least the legal recognition will help uh, these innova innovations and security and private and public data will have attention in the coming, coming nearby years. Our advice to the uh, insurance world is, uh, is the next. Try to make experiments with these three innovations together. We know that a lot of big companies are experimenting separately with these innovations. But from the perspective of insurance companies, uh, because of these three innovations are existing and they are applicable, so they are in use, make combi experimentations. Uh, cooperate with the national smart city projects around the world. Every city is busy with smart city projects. So no insurance laws are taken apart with these uh, projects. And it will give a lot of insight what's going to happen in the cities and in the world of the smart cities. Uh, cooperate with uh, the producers of these sensors and smart devices like NXP, Mealy, Philips, etc. Because these companies don't know what kind of information insurers need. But when you cooperate with these ones, they can build in some extra possibilities and information uh, data delivering through these IT devices because they know then what you really need. Work out real practice scenarios and experiment that in combination, as mentioned earlier. Set up a blockchain cooperation with uh, other insurers in your country or in Europe or in the world, and then try the blockchain combination cooperation with the producers of this one, where these producers can put their devices, IoT devices, in blockchain, and where you can see or a smart device or a device has a guarantee or not. And later stadia, you could use this, that blockchain to know more about IoT devices and you can combine it with your own internal uh, processed automation for your claim processes. Create a technical innovation department. This advice because a lot of uh, big insurance companies have um, an, an advisory innovation department, but no technical department. Involve your own cos uh, c customers and your staff in your experiments, because a lot of insurance companies have thousands and thousands of employees and customers, so they can use them uh, to test these and create these experiments. Uh, create an internal mindset that your own people in your company can create and start up in the benefit of your own company, because these people know what happens 
outside the company, but they know at the same time what happens inside of your company. They know your processes. So when these people can come together and you as a company give them the freedom to create great things, they can help you and bring you further and guarantee you some continuity in the future. Be the first insurance company that comes with a smart living certificate or smart living proposition. And don't be a trend watcher, but create and be a trendsetter, be a trend creator by taking, creating these blockchain corporations, by cooperating with these producers of these sensors and by creating internal startups involving your customers. And don't wait till the other ones are going to disturb you from the other side of the world. And be aware that you don't have any borders anymore, not national borders or, or country borders. All the world will be your target group for your insurances and for your propositions because of these blockchain and because of these IoT devices and the big data, the world is going to be opener for your propositions. Be aware of that as an insurance company. We can resume all of these things at, uh, with this one, I think. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Uh, I hope you have some insight about what these innovations are and how the future of insurance will see out through the window of these three innovations. If you have any questions, you can email me and I will try to answer your questions. Again, thank you for listening to my presentation.